Father, the Father, the Son, the Amen. So good to be here today in in the Kampala here in Uganda and celebrating the true Latin holy sacrifice of the Mass. And uh, today, just a few considerations that, uh, you know, th th is the, the Lord said that where your heart is, where your treasure is, there is your heart. And the greatest treasure that Christ gave to us is himself, his Holy Mother and himself. And he gave himself, to, he gave his, his treasure to us, a blessed sacrament. And in the last 50 years, 60 years now since the Council of Vatican II, one of the great tragedies of the church and in the world is that there have been so many sacrileges attached to this greatest gift. God gave us a gift of himself. And I remember when he gave us a gift of himself, that greatest gift was precisely not the moment that he was born or conceived in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, born in Bethlehem, or the moment of his preaching the first sermon on the mount, teaching us the Holy Gospel. But the most sacred moment is the moment of his own death, when he cried out with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. He had just completed speaking his seven last words on the cross, and now he is dying and giving up the ghost, and there's a separation of his soul from his body. And when the Lord Jesus Christ truly died, and his soul separated from his body, that was the most sacred moment in all the history of the world. And this moment is so sacred that he has will that it be repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated millions of times until the very ending of the world. Well, most sacred moment, the most sacred instant in all of human history was the moment when God the Son united to the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ united to the humanity of Christ, inside the body of our Lord Jesus Christ at 3 p.m. on Good Friday, cried out with a loud voice, and the soul went out of the body. And there was a separation of the soul from the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is called death. <coughs> death occurs when the soul separates from the body. And that moment of the separation was the perfection and the completion of, of the sacrifice of our Lord on the cross. And at that exact moment, Satan's kingdom is destroyed. Hell is wiped out. And those souls that reject him on his left side at that moment, these souls shall be eternally damned with the devil in hell. And those souls that are with him, standing at the foot of the cross, who were touched by the blood that came from his side, these ones shall be saved. It's the defining moment in history. The Lord Jesus Christ said when he gave the Mass to his apostles, he said, as often as you shall do these things, do them in memory of me. And these shall be done as a memorial of the death of the Lord until he come. Remember the holy sacrifice of the Mass. It is a memorial of the death of the Lord. One of the great lies that has been told since Vatican II, 1962 to 1965, that's when they changed our church. For 1,930 years, our church was the same. But then they decided we are going to make our church different. Instead of our Holy Roman Catholic Church being focused and founded on the death of Christ, on the crucifix, on the doctrine that he spoke from the cross, we are now going to make our church built on humanity. It's going to be built on man. For instance, one very wicked thing they did at the New Mass, one very wicked thing they did, they took the worship of God, and they turned it to the worship of man. You know, once an Indian priest told me, he says, you know why priests like the new mass? You know why they like it? Because they don't care about Latin and all that sort of thing. But you know why the new mass is so attractive to a modern priest? Because in the old mass, the priest used to stand at the altar like this, and he worships God. 
And a few times he turns around and says, Dominus Bisco, and then he's back like this. And he's facing God, and he's worshiping God. So, at the true Mass, it doesn't matter whether which priest is celebrating Mass. Because the priest is a representative of Christ, he's holding the host, he's taking the wine, he's offering the sacred gifts, and he is worshiping God. And the priest is unimportant. God is important. But in the new Mass, the priest is facing the people. And what is he doing? See that? Where is the focus? The focus is on numero uno, numero uno, numero uno, number one. And then at the new Mass, what do you say? I go to Father Bob's Mass, because Father Bob is nice. I go to Father Jim's Mass, because he likes me. I go to Father Ralph's Mass, because he's more holy than the other father. And we forget about Jesus Christ. And then what happens? See, here in the Mass, we are facing the crucifix. Facing the crucifix. But in the new Mass, the person is facing you, and now Jesus Christ is lost in the middle. Do you know that was the decision of Pilate 2,000 years ago? When he decided to crucify Christ, he said, I don't want people to think that I was waking out of bed in the morning and forced to crucify Jesus. I don't want him to think that. Find two other criminals due to be crucified. Which ones? I don't care. Just get two guys. Make sure one's in front of Jesus and the other one is behind him. So that when the people see they went out, oh, Jesus Christ, he's not the first one. Jesus Christ, he's not the last one. He's just one of the ones in the middle. It was just another day of crucifixion, and it was just a bad day for the Lord Jesus. He was crucified by accident, mixed in with two other criminal cases. And hence Pilate said, make sure that one thief is on the right side of our Lord. Make sure another thief is on the left, so that he's not the first or the last is just in the middle. You know, the new Mass is invented by modern pilots. And where is Jesus Christ? We see him represented on the cross. In the new Mass, what do we do? We put Jesus in the middle. So now he's put on the altar in front of a modern table, not an altar, and he's got two options. Either he can face towards the priest, but if it's too big of a cross, you can't see the priest. So the cross becomes unimportant. It becomes forgotten. The priest can take the cross and face it towards himself, and then what happened? The Lord Jesus Christ has his back to you. And therefore, you don't see him. The other option is the priest turns the cross around. He puts it on the little table for the new mass. Now you can see Jesus. But the priest cannot. And so Christ is still in the middle and unimportant. Some priest, realizing this problem, you can buy a crucifix now for the new mass, which has Jesus Christ on one side and on the other. So now we've got two Jesuses. There's only one. And so we got a worse problem. You see, we human beings... How do we know our faith? We know it by how we look. We know it by the symbols and the things that we decide to do. We make the, how do you know you're Catholic? You see someone make the sign of the cross. Oh, he's a Catholic. He knows how to make the sign of the cross. We know them by how we A act. Then the new mass, Jesus Christ, is unimportant. So since Jesus Christ is unimportant, and the mass, the new mass, is focused on man, what happens? What happens? That Christ is forgotten. We no longer go to church to worship Christ. We no longer go to church to fulfill our obligation to adore God. And so since church is for man, then why go to church anymore? 
So since 1965 and the allies of the Vatican II, and 1969 and the invention of the new mass in the vernacular language with the people, with the priests facing the people, what happened? Everywhere in the world, people stopped going to church. If church is just for you, why do you need to go to church? But if church is for God, you must go to church. God is in the church, and he must be worshipped in the church, so therefore you come to the church to worship God. In the most sacred moment of the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was the moment that he died, the moment that his body and blood were separated from each other, the moment of the death of Christ. This is the moment we celebrate in the true Latin holy <laughs> sacrifice of the Mass. The moment of the death of Christ. When he defeated Satan, and the priest offers a sacrifice in the name of the people, and he offers a sacrifice in the name of the church, and he speaks in the name of God. He's called the mediator. That's why the priest has two directions. One, he faces towards God. Since the most important thing is to speak to God, the priest spends 90% of his time at Mass facing God. But he also takes the treasures of heaven, and he turns around, and he gives them to the people. And this he does several times during the Mass, when he turns around and says, Dominus Vobiscum. The Lord be with thee. The Lord be with you. And the bishop says, Pax Vobiscum. Peace be with you. Because he speaks in the actual name of Christ. And then the peace is given. And then we take the prayers of the people, we turn around, and then give them to God. And go back to the worship of the sacrifice. You pray with your heart at the Mass. Jesus Christ dies on the cross in an unbloody manner. He receives his body and blood are separated. And this separation is shown in the Mass by two consecrations, called the double consecration. First, the priest says, this is my body over the host. Then, a few moments later, the priest says, this is the chalice of my blood of the New and Eternal Testament, the mystery of faith, which shall be shed for you and for many in the remission of sins over the chalice. And then there is a sacramental separation of the body and blood. And we have the sacramental experience of the sacrifice, of the ripping apart of the body and blood of Christ for our salvation. And grace flows from this sacrifice. During this Mass, you say the words of St. Thomas the Apostle. It's a custom, for instance, when the priest elevates the chalice, when the priest elevates the host so that you can worship, you say quietly, in your own heart, the words that St. Thomas the Apostle said 2,000 years ago, when he saw our Lord Jesus Christ risen from the dead, he said, My Lord and my God. And so you say in your heart, My Lord and my God, when the priest raises the host. My Lord and my God, when the priest raises the chalice. And that then you ask that all the blood of Christ be poured upon you, that you might be wiped away all your sins, be cleansed and filled with Christ and filled with the faith. This Mass has been around since Jesus Christ died on the cross 2,000 years ago. And it will remain until the end of time. The devil hates this true Latin Mass. He has tried to wipe it out. He will never succeed. This one of these true Masses celebrated in union with our Holy Mother the Church is of greater value than thousands and thousands and thousands of the new sacrilegious rite which is focused on man rather than God, and leads to a loss of faith rather than a fulfillment of it, and is displeasing and sacrilegious before God. We want the true Mass to be with us. We bring this true Mass here to Uganda, and this true Mass is needed everywhere in the world, along with the faith that goes with it. So persevere in the love of Christ and recognize that the Mass is the sacramental separation, the sacrifice of Calvary, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, the separation of his body and blood, 3 p.m. on Good Friday, for our salvation. The moment of grace, the moment that heaven is conquered. And so let's stay strong with the Lord and try to unite our hearts to that moment. And we'll close it with that. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.